to pray. Come on, in the song. upon this life and we command that the cells dry up now and I command God that his body be restored to full health I command the lingering cells over the kidneys back up now in the name of the Lord Jesus and put a surge of energy in his body shut up oh, somebody help me praise him for the his of us I said Jehovah Rapha is in the house. What the doctors can't do, he can. What chemo can't do, he can. What radiation can't do, he can. Come on, raise your voices high. Thank you, Lord. Come quick, quick, quick. He comes down to do. I said, He comes down to do in the house. He sent His word. The woman at the issue of blood, somebody touched me. Virtue left my body. I just need a praising church. Somebody's streaming. You're healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is not voodoo, this is the name of the Lord. And every stripe on his back, every wound on his back included your sickness. And we receive healing now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, I dare you to praise him. Roho Sabat said he gave a mochi kabat satabat. Somebody has a urinary tract infection and you've been bleeding every time you go to the bathroom. And the Lord said, I just dried it up. Oh, come on, I believe God right now. I said, I believe God right now. I believe in for healing all the way. All right, all right, all right. To your neighbor, you don't know like I know what the Lord just did for me. Some of you were sick and didn't even know you needed healing. <laughs> hey! The CT scan didn't show it. But the Holy Ghost spotted it. Come on, sir. Eva Hosa Bats again. Shiri Husa Babande, get up above a host. Eva Baba Hande, then they could up above a host again. Hey, 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 hey. Shut up, I shut up, I shut up, I hear. Who do you have? Oh, hey, get Bohosa. Come on and help me praise him right now. Glory. 
but the MRI can't show. The Holy Ghost just spotted it. Hey! charismatic and we believe that the gifts of the spirit still work and this is no hoodoo voodoo you know the Lord has healed you many times oh come on some of you should have been on dialysis and the Lord kicked that kidney right back in somebody help me right here come on Karistine we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come on. He's a good shepherd and he takes care of his sheep. My, 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 my. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, something is happening to my body. I don't know what it is just yet. I don't know what it is just yet. But I'm going to find out in a minute. I thought I was so fine. He's a thyroid healer. <laughs> Come on and praise him. Uh, I know you don't like to move, but I suggest it. I suggest you celebrate him.
sir, I confront you in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There won't be any strange cells on the pap smear. I'm going there, I'm going there, I'm going there. I command that the pap smear becomes clear. Help me, 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 help me. <laughs> hey, come on, shiver, so. he wants to do when he gets ready. Don't apologize, because when you go to the doctor's office, you go by yourself. So when he does it, why don't you praise him in the congregation of the righteous? Glory to God. Glory to God. Tell you 
you the number of times that the Lord healed me. I won't even tell you. Maybe five years from now, I'll write the book. But he's a healer. He's a keeper. He's a deliverer. A sustainer. Come on. He's a healer. He's a keeper. He's a deliverer. A sustainer. Somebody still got to be delivered right now.
All right, you can sit down if you can. Did I say sit down? Did I say sit down? Praise the Lord if you can. All right, we're going to go on with the announcements, some things we have to share. And somebody is streaming all the way from Australia. I speak by the Spirit. Amen. And you were thinking of changing your gender. And the Holy Ghost got a hold to you. You're settled. You're in agreement with God that you're the man that God made you to be. I see it. You want to hear what I said? I said, I see it. So says yes. So says yes. Nobody can do it like the Lord. All right, we're going to move on. Pastor George, and then Amen. Every now and then he's got to show up like this to remind you you're not in charge here. I said you're not in charge, McCullough. You're not in charge. And if you don't like this kind of stuff, well, I'm so I'm not apologizing. But sometimes he comes by to disrupt the order of things, to put things in order. Tell your neighbor, he put something in order for me today. Something was out of order. Help me. I said something was out of order. Someone's getting ready to pop off. funny on me and Holy Ghost said oh no oh no oh no you were getting ready to turn my life upside down you playing with me Holy Ghost said don't play with him don't play with him I got him I got her you ain't you ain't gonna put your order in here it's my order tell your neighbor my life is back in order my life is back in order so, 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 so. Back in order. He intervened, saints, just in time. Starting the month of, is it July? Um, July, starting month of July. 
we're going to have one night deliverance service for the whole summer. We're going back to it, saints. We need to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hey, somebody help me praise it. Miracles, healing, deliverances. Somebody praise it, but he has so Tell your neighbor, it started right here. It started right here. Be seated if you can for the last time, you all. Be seated. In the name of Jesus. Whatever he said he did is done in the name of Jesus. Just done, that's all. We have two, we have two precious children here who have to get back to children's church. Unless the Lord slayed them in the spirit. Um, we thank God for we thank God for Master Jordy. Come, baby. He he ended up with an A average. All of his subjects A, A minus, A plus, B plus. And he had his Kumon test, literature, 32 out of 32. Bam, 42 out of 42. I mean, we just thank God. Put your hands together for Master Jordan. We have Miss Grace. Yes, Miss Grace. And she raised her hand in class and asked most questions about math. So her math ability was so stirred up in curiosity that they gave her a certificate for wanting to know math. You know that's a blessing. Bless you, bless you. And you didn't cry, glory to God. Now this is who? You have to pronounce her name for me because I'll destroy it. This is Emaya Const Constable. She made the honor roll. Great Oaks Legacy Elementary School achieving proficiency in the trimester two, 2018 to 2019 school year. Come on, hold it up. Hold it up. Uh, uh, uh. See that lady make a big smile. Yes. Amen. Put your hands together for this wonderful child. God bless you, baby. You finish? Yeah. You wanna you wanna go back? Yes. Or you wanna stay right there? You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see. I've got to do this very quickly. Just to add to the announcements, ministers' meeting uh, next Sunday. Is it next Sunday? Yes, next Sunday. And uh, the fourteenth. It's the fourteenth next Sunday. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay. We're going to go to Rama Church, and that is April 11th. That's Thursday coming, and we have the directions. It, Pastor Diane will have the directions. We, oh, we should be posted on the, um, the on the announcements. We have a new class for children five to twelve, I think it is, during the ten o'clock hour. So please, when you bring your children, they will have a class. Amen. Um, we thank God for the children's choir and the children's musical um, training. Amen. It's doing very, very well. I want to thank all of the, the junior missionary that came out. Stand up and prayed for one hour. Every one of you who stayed over on Friday night, stand up. Amen. We thank you. We're asking all the remnant women to join us. All the remnant women to join us Friday, one hour. We had a wonderful prayer. And we thank God that he's answering a prayer. Amen. The Mother's Day luncheon is here. And we're asking you to really fully participate. I believe that the Lord is going to bless us at that luncheon. Please see Sister Joy Hamilton 
or Sister Claudia. Amen. And, and get your ticket, $65 for adults, $25 for children, 12 and under. And if you can sponsor somebody, well, I'm not going to be there. All right. But you can sponsor somebody. Amen. You can find out who wants to go and can't afford to go or can't afford their children to go. We're asking the men to come and, and support the women. Amen. For that wonderful day. I know you're quiet, but it's going to be filled. Because I know how the Lord works. The Lord works in spite of you. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful time. Amen. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles to Philippians 1, 6, chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. And I know the time, so I'm going to have to navigate very skillfully through this. If you want the full version, you have to get a CD or the link from this morning. Philippians chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 and ending at verse 6. The title of the sermon, he's a start starter and the finisher. Whatever he starts, he's bad enough to finish. Tell your neighbor, he's bad enough to finish this. Mm -hmm. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. I'm praying because for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. The text, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So far, the reading, hearing, and obeying and accepting the word of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Can you all hear me back there? Is it clear back there? Anybody by the copying machine? Anybody back there? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, all right. So this is the church at Philippi. It's in the city of um, Eastern Macedonia, which is now modern Greece. And Paul preached out in this church in his second missionary journey. It was not always a pleasant experience at Philippi because it was in Philippi that he was jailed, put in maximum security. But it's in Philippi that he was broken out of prison by divine hand and the Philippian jailer got saved. This particular city, you always need 10 Jewish men, men over 40, to, to have what you call a synagogue, an official gathering. So there weren't 10 Jewish men who were available. But one woman named Lydia, who got saved, said, I'm going to have them come to my house. So this was a house church, started right there. So Paul now is writing a letter to this church that has go, they have gone through, you know, growth, maturity. They have been stabilized in the gospel. They're not like the Galatian church. You did run well, but what does hinder you? They're not like the Corinthian church that's always defying Paul and trying to mix their worship with their carnal ways. Amen? They, this is a church now that's been growing. They have their issues, their issues, but, but, but their growth is so remarkable. They continued in the gospel that it impressed Paul. I thank my God for you. The greatest thing for any pastor, a true pastor, is that the saints grow. That those who are walking with the Lord are continuing to walk. You know, even if they fall down, they get back up again. So he's saying, I am so glad. I pray and I thank God that you're continuing. You bring me joy and the Lord is strengthening you. And I just want you to continue. Not only do I pray, but Timotheus, the leaders, and I greet the leaders of the church. You know what I'm saying? You don't see anything here that protocol established. No, no, no. And the reason why I'm saying that, saints, I know we make up our own stuff as we go along, 
But when you read any of these epistles, there's a certain way they greeted the saints. Because it was not just to, to ex, you know, expound on titles or to, to, to lift up titles. It was to help to undergird them in the faith. I want the preachers who labor with you when I'm not here to know I greet them. I'm in prison, but you deacons, you're doing your job. Grace be unto you. Keep up the good work. I want to let you know you are being recognized for your labor of love. And to every executive pastor in the house, to every pastor in partnership, Sondia Shay. To every pastor in training, to every deacon, junior deacon, missionary, junior missionary, to all of you, grace be unto you. And peace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank my God for you. Because I remember you in my prayer. What a pastoral heart. I may be in jail, but I'm praying. I can't visit you, but you're on my mind. And I'm very much aware of you. And I'm interceding for you. So if you want more introduction, get the first message at 730. But let me get to the first point. He says, I am what? I am confident being, being means I'm in a state of it. That means I'm continuing in it. It says being confident, and the word confident means convinced. There are many meanings, but I'm choosing the one that is applicable to this text. It means I'm convinced, I am assured, I am persuaded, I'm in agreement. I am assured, I am persuaded, I am convinced. And it is in a certain form of the verb, it's a strong language meaning I'm completely convinced. It means that there is no room for doubt. There is no room for questioning. You cannot introduce a thought to me about this and I consider it. There is no room for consideration. It is so thoroughly clear in my mind that there is no room for even discussion. I am thoroughly persuaded. It's a strong language. Firmly persuaded or convinced. It's in the middle voice. That means I'm convinced within myself. That nothing from the outside can influence or shape me. You see, when you get like that, you see, they call you extra. You know, they, they, they say something's some wrong with you. When you're rock bottom sure. Tell your neighbor I'm rock bottom sure. You know, you just... This, this thing got a hold to me so bad that I'm, I can't be shaken from it. It's, I'm, as they used to sing in the old church, I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up. You know what it is to be tangled? Come on, tangled up. That's the way he is. He's tangled up in this. And we know that the word persuaded means, as I said, to be convinced, to be assured. And I love this. I have many scriptures. I'm just going to pick one because I don't have the time you all shouted so much Hebrews 11:13 it says these all died in faith not receiving the promises we never preach from that part we preach from Hebrews 1 to 6 or 7 or 8 but we don't go to 13 but these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off i see them in the grandchildren I see them in the 2050 church. I see them, maybe I so. I see them afar off. And we're persuaded of them. I ain't asking if it's going to happen. And embrace them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. In other words, I may be traveling through, but some things going to happen. Some things going to happen. It means that Paul was entirely convinced. Ask your neighbor, are you entirely convinced? Are you entirely convinced? Or are you still searching? Are you Googling for another aspect of your faith? 
Are you on a Google search? Huh? But are you rock bottom sure that in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being? He was sure. But he was sure about something very specific. He's talking about the Philippian church that he preached out and established. And this very thing is the accusative. It's receiving what he is convinced about. What are you convinced about, Paul? Paul, it's in a 1-4. This is what he's convinced about. It's right there. Always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. And it's in verse 5. For your fellowship in the gospel. That's what I'm convinced about. When you receive the gospel and you're still continuing the gospel, I'm convinced. I am assured that something happened to you. Something started in you. It didn't start when you accepted the Lord. It didn't start when Lydia opened the doors of her home and the church started. It didn't start that. It started before the foundation of the world. It started before I hung the moon and the star. It started then. It started in eternity past. It started in my mind, in my mind, it started. In my eternal purpose, it started. <laughs> Before Adam was formed, it started. You understand how bad this thing is now? You in it, you in it and can't get out of it. Because you see, it, it didn't start when you were born. It didn't start when you got saved. It didn't start when you spoke in tongues. It didn't start when you jiggled. It started in the mind of God, in the purpose of God. Uh, and what you gonna do with his mind? He said, I do what I want and who can say, what doest thou? I feel a little something coming on me. I'm gonna be finished in a minute. Mm -hmm. It started before he breathed into man and man became a living soul. Paul said, I see it in you. Tell your neighbor, I see it in you, I see it in you. Now, you, you don't look like it right now because you might be a little messy, but I see it in you. <laughs> ah, you might be a little raggedy right now because you're trying to run. Hey, but I see it in you anyhow. Lord, have mercy. You might have to look at yourself and say, I know I'm not worthy, but it's in me anyhow. It's in me anyhow. Because it's not based on my worthiness. It's based on what he desires. So it started. I am assured. I am convinced. I am persuaded. I'm not teeth tottering. I'm not thinking. I'm not wondering. I'm not trying to figure out. I'm convinced about you, pastor talking to the church. He could only be convinced like that because he, he had a taste of it, you see. He's not just talking from just a doctrinal position. He's talking from an experiential position. See, because talking for the fact that something happened to him. <laughs> See, when something happened to you like that, you can talk the doctrine with a little oomph. See, <laughs> when you have tasted it, it's not just a dry delivery or a lecture. You talk with such authority. It's not what Nicodemus said. Ah, you teach a little bit different from them boys, them Pharisee kill boys that keep us up in there for hours repeating the 613 ceremonial laws and putting us all to sleep. When you open your mouth, something happens. Something happens. Because you're the living word. You're the living word. Paul said, I can talk this. I can talk this because I know what it is to have something start in me. <laughs> it didn't start in me on the Damascus road started me a long time ago but it just materialized tell your neighbor it started but one day it what material one day i latched on <laughs> come on you mothers that give breast milk there's there's a way a baby latches Ooh. you know them greedy babies don't like to let go they don't like to let go they latch on something made me latch on even though it was in me, it started. And the word started is in the aorist tense, means it started a long time ago. And it wasn't started by the recipient. 
It was started by the person who received it. It was started by the person who gave it. You see what I'm saying? He started it. He begun a good work. He dropped it in. It's called the work of God, the work of the Lord, the work of Christ. You understand? And what is the work of the Lord? Because we know we make these phrases. What does that mean? The work of the Lord. He that hath begun a good work. What is that? John 6, 29 makes it very clear. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Here it is now. Here it is. Here it is. None of them things that you all be talking about. This is the work of God. That you believe on him whom he hath sent. <laughs> simple, 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 simple. Nothing complicated. That you have the ability to agree that this is God in the flesh. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to the Father is through him. That's all. That's all. That's the work of God. You know, the disciples went out and did a little something, something, and they came back and said, oh, Lord, we did all this work. Jesus said, that ain't, that ain't it. Mm -mm. You're looking for a little, you know, certificate here. But let me tell you this. Be glad that your name has been written, has been written. <laughs> Be glad that you, you've been put in it. You understand? This little work you did didn't make you qualify. You didn't qualify because you did a little something. What qualified you was my choice. So Paul is affirming that the work begun by God. Tell your neighbor it was God. It was God. It was not my own will. I was not born with the will to want God. See how quiet it got? Because we want to think that we added a little something, something. Or, or that we responded appropriately. We don't even know what appropriate is. We don't know what appropriate is. We don't know what it is to respond. We were not born with the capacity. The ability, the predilection, the desire, the urge, <laughs> the want to, to want to. <laughs> Tell you never, you weren't born with the want to. <laughs> oh, you were a good girl. Didn't give your mama no trouble. Didn't give your mama, which is a lie, because you didn't get some trouble. Didn't give your mama no trouble. You were a perfect child. You know, you didn't do nothing wrong. You didn't get no Ill Ill illegitimate baby. You were never on drugs. You never, whatever, whatever, whatever. You thought about some things and wanted to do it, but you couldn't do it and you didn't do it. But that doesn't mean that you had a desire for God. Okay, McCullough, just a scripture, just a scripture. Stick with that. Ephesians 2, 1. And you have he what? Who were what? In and sinned. We're in in time past. You walk according to what? The course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our lifestyle, our conversation in time passes where we live. Where we live. We lived on Lust Boulevard. Everything was a lust. That's all the flesh is. It's just lust. It just, I just want it. I just want to. I just need to. I just got to. That's all it is. I just want to. I just need to. I just got to. That's how we live. That's how we live. In the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Whatever I thought. You remember Solomon? Whatever I saw that I wanted, I got it. Remember that scripture? And where by nature, it was natural, the children of wrath even as others, but God, who is what? Rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Verse 5, help me out. Verse 5, ain't nobody flowing with me. We're in Ephesians 2, 5. Ephesians 2, 5. Somebody have it, they can jump up and read it. Even when we were what? Dead in sin hath what? Quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved through faith. Now, now, many of you just, you know, if you're Pentecostal, meaning, you know, you come from a certain tradition, you know what I'm saying? We think your quickening just means, you know, 
Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. It may not be contextual, but maybe. <laughs> but just look at that particular expression. Here I am, straight, tight, no response, nothing, can't move it. See, that's what happened. Death. God quickened me. All right? And gave me the ability to believe. Colossians 2.13, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he what? Quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. So he went by the grave. See, grave, tombstone, and he, you're dead now, you're dead. You cannot want him because you're dead. You cannot respond. So I don't know what you're talking about because I was raised in church and I sang all the hymns, dead, grave, yard, dead. And they, and they forced me to study the scripture and I can quote all, most of the songs with my eyes closed dead. Graveyard dead. And I served on the different boards in the church and I wore my white on certain Sundays. Graveyard dead. And I gave to the poor and took some basket of food down the road to mother so and so. Dead. Dead. And God, out of his good pleasure, no, no pre-requirements because you don't even, you don't even, you know, you can't meet the requirements. You, you should not have been chosen. Mm -hmm. ain't, nothing, ain't nothing about me that was chosen quality. Mm -hmm. I was not up to par. Mm -hmm. I missed the mark. Mm -hmm. And yet he picked me. Not because of any presentation. This is not resume. You know you have to fix your resume to try to get the job. You can't even fix this. Fix no resume. And that kills us, it kills us, it kills us, it kills us. That's why we don't like this whole reform thing. Because, you know, we, 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 why don't you just give me a little play? Give me a little play. Make me feel. Let me feel like I'm a little important. Please. Why don't you just, just rob me of such expressions? <laughs> I ain't robbing you. I ain't robbing you. I ain't robbing you. You were dead. Huh? We ain't no grave robbers in here. You, you were, what? You were dead in trespass and sin. And he made you alive. Now that's what you concentrate on. Now never mind trying to be defensive about the dead. Be grateful for the life. So... I'm confident that he made you alive. Confident that the people that he sent in this church and saved, he reached down and made you alive. He started something. Not me. He started something way back in eternity past. He started something that I could never start and don't want to start. Because I couldn't start for myself. He started it. He gets Why? Because left up to us, we wouldn't choose him, and we wouldn't choose each other. <laughs> we are chosen, and we don't like each other. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if it were left up to us to choose? So many people would be what? Eliminated. But it's not left up to us. He chose the most unlikely. People that we think don't deserve it and still think that they don't deserve it. That's why he's a starter. You ain't starting nothing. <laughs> the Bible says in the second point, the third point, first point was confident, second point, the starter, the third and final point, the finisher. See, the thing about God is he cannot fail. He cannot make errors. He's omniscient, omnipresent, okay, omnipotent. 
There's no shadow of turning in him. He's immutable. He's unchangeable. You understand? So there's no such thing as him choosing you and then waking up and finding out that you're not what he wants and then he throws you away. We do that. You know? We find out. Because first of all, he doesn't choose mistakes. He doesn't choose mistakes. Now, you were, you were born in sin and dead. You were a mistake. You were a thorough mistake. You were a messed up, bloody mistake, whatever. But he chooses you in spite of that. He knew exactly what he wanted. There are no surprises in your life when it comes to God. He's not shocked. I said he is not shocked about last night. He ain't shocked. Can I go there? I just, I feel a going. I feel a going. He's not shocked about anything that we think, we do, or we say. Nothing surprising. You are not surprising him where he puts his hand over his mouth. Now, I get probably get shocked, probably. You probably get shocked. Oh, my God. But he's not surprised. He knew what he wanted, and he knew what he got. <laughs> huh? He's not like you all that get married. Well, I didn't know I was going to get this. I said, he ain't shocked. He ain't shocked. Mm -hmm. Not surprised. He knows that you're still doing voodoo. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he ain't shocked. <laughs> It's called soft voodoo. It's called soft voodoo. <laughs> Let me just explain that. That's not in my notes, so, and I'm gonna be finished in a minute. We call it tradition. Say that. We call Say it that. family preferences. Say that. And because Aunt Nunu do it, then it's okay. I'm talking to you and Aunt Nunu. The Bible said, any curious arts, ask Paul, Saul rather, when he couldn't hear from God, he went to inquire of the witch of Endor. So when you move to another source to get the resource, I don't care, I don't care. I don't care if it's once a month reading. Even <laughs> anaso. It's a once a month reading. I don't care if it's on to Nunu in the hills of what? One of them countries or whatever where you just make a call and, then, and they give you a little reading on the phone. Or if it's one of your prophetic voices that you listen to. Same thing. <laughs> He knew, he knew he was calling you with a, with a predisposition and a prone to look to other sources when you're stressed. Knew it. But he still started. <laughs> That's what amazes me. He knows all of that, but he started. Not when you started doing that, but before you were even born, he chose you, knowing that you're going to be doing that dumb stuff. And now he's saying, I'm going to finish it. Tell your neighbor, you're in finishing school. <laughs> you, know, you know, rich people send their daughters and sons to finishing school so that they could look finished and polished. See? Because we're into looks. 
Not that we shouldn't look a certain way, but, but that we, we, the look doesn't necessarily mean you're finished. And when you're in finishing school, in God's finishing school, most of the time you don't look finished. You look raggedy. That's why in the church we don't get along because we don't expect people to look that raggedy in church. We don't expect, we, we expect them to look like a finished product, you see what I'm saying? We want finished product even though we're not finished. But, but, but we, 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 we don't understand. The finishing school has to work some things out and sometimes it doesn't look pretty when it's being worked out, you know what I'm saying? He's got to work the cursing out of you. So you got to curse for a while. You all think I'm joking? Huh? You got to curse until you hate him. You hate yourself. When you hear it, it ought to make you sick. So you have to say it. See? You say to him, oh my God. You want to vomit when you hear it. And God said, I got it now. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm finishing up that part. I'm finishing up that part. Because now you hate what I hate. <laughs> hey, somebody help me. Help me praise it. So, you know, you, I'm almost finished, saints. But, you know, you, you're in this finishing school. But you just can't be finished with being in those relationships. You just can't be finished. You know, you, you start it, and it looks like you'll never be finished with that kind of stuff. You know, so it's, it's he, she, it, the cat, the dog. You know, it's a season with it, it's a season with he, it's a season with she. It's just back and forth. And anybody looking at it would say, Oh my God, that is horrible. That is terrible. How could God want somebody that slip in and out of he, she, it, and that? Because <laughs> there's a that, you know. That mean a thing, see. Y'all don't let me go there now because I'll explain things, see. <laughs> How could you start something with that kind of appetite? He did say with the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That ain't no news. That's the way the nature is. And the nature can come out in all kinds of ways. And you find yourself embroiled in that kind of stuff and so addicted to it that you can't get out until one day the finishing process get a hold to you and you suddenly hate the sin that makes you moan how did you walk out of that how did you look at it and have no intention of going back how did you walk out of it and saw the beauty of Jesus in your life and made a conscious decision that this is not what God wants me to have and the very taste and the desire and the motivation has been cut down in the pit of your belly and you can see it and don't touch it look at it and don't want it walk by it and don't look back how did it happen Tell your neighbor I'm in finishing school. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. <laughs> Something happened, you all. Something happened a long time ago. An account was settled a long time ago. And I'm walking in something bigger than myself. This is not me doing it. It's God doing it in me. Because if he isn't doing it in me, I would want the same thing. I would be like a hog to its wallow and a dog to its vomit. But God is doing something in me that even if I think about going back, there's something that's constraining me. And so, well, you know, that's you, but I'm not there yet. Tell your neighbor, you ain't finishing school too. Keep saying you're not there yet. There's a moment coming when you're going to get there. Tell your neighbor, you're on your way there now. You just don't know it. <laughs> Somebody help me. I said you're on your way. <laughs> you just haven't feel, felt the wind yet. There's a wind getting ready to blow. 
getting ready to blow the chaff from off of you getting ready to get down to the kernel of your soul getting ready to wrap you around the word of God in a way where you can't resist him because he is irresistible come on and put your hands together just want to hear you praise him glory 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 he knows he knows that you're opinionated opinionated and that you know more than him he chose you like that you so smart you're smarter than him. And you live by the gospel of your name. It's a lowercase g, but it's a gospel. And you're deceived enough to think that that gospel is going to take you all the way home. You don't realize that God is getting ready to shift you out of that because he can't choose you and you stay in that gospel. Tell your neighbor, you ain't going to stay there. And I know, I know you kind of like it there. <laughs> you know, now I'm not getting a little dance in my feet when I hear certain things. I know you kind of like it there because there's some places we just like. We, we don't want nobody to touch, nobody to say nothing because it's comfortable. Because we know how to get by. We know how to work around this religious stuff. So, so we, don't, we feel like, you know, it, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to go to heaven like this. But tell somebody you're in a finishing. You're in a finishing school. And, 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 and it may not come right now. It may not come right now. But he's got his finger on it. You may skip that class. Every semester, you don't put that class on your, on your schedule. Uh, and every semester you think, I don't need that. I don't need that class. That ain't my major. <laughs> That's not where my life is going. You understand? So I don't need that particular class. So you keep putting it off. But graduation is coming, and you're going to have to fulfill the requirement for graduation. So you're going to take that class. Say, you're going to take that class. You're take that class. You know why? Because you're going to graduate. You're going to graduate. <laughs> I don't enroll you in my school, and you don't graduate. So you, you, you're going to finish this. You're going to finish this. You can avoid it, escape it, run from it, cover it up, dress it up, pretty it up. But you're not dealing with McCullough, you're dealing with him. Because McCullough didn't start you. And I can't finish you. <laughs> McCullough didn't even start herself. You see, so it's the one who started you who is going to finish you up. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he's going to finish you up. He's going to finish you up. <laughs> All that ragged in this, he gonna work it out, he gonna work it out. All that hypocrisy and pretentiousness, he gonna work it out. You gonna love him and wanna love him. You gonna show up and don't wanna leave. You gonna praise him and they gonna have to sit you down. You gonna holler and they gonna have to put something over your mouth. You gonna read until somebody gotta tell you, put the book down. Hey, oh, hey, hey. He gonna, whoop. You gonna preach, I wanna preach. Hey! <laughs> That's how he works at saints. It's called finish. Hebrews 12 and two. And then I'm finished. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, who is what? The author and what? Of our what? Who for the what? Set before him did what? Despising what? And sat down at? All right, all right. I just want to do one more hot scripture and then I'm finished. It's a hot scripture. It's so hot. It talks about perseverance. Tell your neighbor, you're going all the way. You're going all the way. And listen, this is why we don't have to push you to go. Tell your neighbor, I'm not pushing you. This is why I'm not begging you to go. Because I didn't start you. If I didn't start you, I can't make you. 
And that's what's wrong with the church. We try to make people. We try to pull them. Doesn't mean we shouldn't confront them, encourage them, and go them as a shepherd. But after a while, you cannot make them. You cannot put it in their brain. Even if you chop them head, you know, just chop the head. See, just chop it right up in here. So. See, you can't put it in there, no. After you close it up, they still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Saints, there was a time I didn't understand what it was to persevere in church situations. I was in charge of the all-night prayers. I was in charge of the church life, Pastor Angel. I was in charge of communion. I was in charge of setting up the fast. While everybody else was out at Junior's eating, I had to stay there all night. I had to work with my little tired committee, and I had to get everything ready, and I hated it. And when they came back, they came back to the all-night prayer, and he was going to teach, and because he went and got something to eat, and he was had all the energy, and he was strong, and he was going to teach all night without a break. And I would hide behind the organ, and I would almost cuss them out because I didn't want to go through. I was skipping class. I didn't want that kind of finish. I wanted my bed. I didn't know. I didn't know I was going to love all night prayer. I didn't. <laughs> hey, Lord, you help me. I didn't know that I was going to love fasting and prayer. I, I thought that I was going to be in that situation and skip that for the rest of my life. I didn't know I was in finishing school. I didn't know that he was going to set me up to do the very thing that I didn't want to do. I didn't know he was working out my ignorance and my rebellion, uh, my self-centeredness and my comfort station. I didn't know he was getting ready to wreck my world and let me see what I was born to do. I didn't know it. I was sitting behind the organ, twisting my mouth and acting stupid. But I didn't see this day. But I'm so glad that I went from one grade to the other. And I'm so glad that he's the author and that he's a finisher, he's a starter, and he's a performer, and I am what I am by the grace of the living God. Come on and put your hands together. I want to hear you praise him. Tell your neighbor, skip your class, baby, skip it. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you when you skip your class. Because I know the professor that I know it's the same professor that I know. I ain't mad at you that you don't want to do that right now. Feel a running now. Oh, I ain't mad at you that you don't think that's priority. Come up higher, come up higher, come up higher. Somebody help me praise him in the also. Shut up a horse under the also. Says Romans 8:25. I want you to put it on the screen with me, Romans 8.25, and I'm stopping at the 30th verse. It's 8.25 to 30, and we all going to read it together. I just want to give you a glimpse of your finishing school curriculum. <laughs> Come on, Jessica. Shanamandosia. I know you got two children. <laughs> and I know you work hard and you're in school. And I know ain't no man paying the rent. <laughs> but your big daddy said Romans 8 25. <laughs> That's what your big daddy said. This one, read, read with me, honey. Read, read. I want you all to read. Here begins God's word. But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also, having our infirmities, 
but we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts know it what is the mind of the Spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his mercy. Pause. It is not working for good just for everybody. It's working for the one that he started with. He done start something. Tell your neighbor he started something with me. He started something. I know it doesn't look like anything started, but it did start. And it's according to his what? Purpose. Verse 29. Here's the curriculum now. Here it is. Here it is. Laying it out. This is how I operate. This is how I operate in my finishing school. For whom he did what? He also did to be to the image of his. That he might be the among many. Moreover. Extra, extra, extra. Moreover, Veronica, whom he did what? Them he also, and whom he called, and whom he justified. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Tell your neighbor it's a done deal. Come and you ain't going nowhere, baby. You ain't going nowhere. It's, this thing is tied up. It's tied up. It's sealed. It's sealed bad. Tell your neighbor, it's sealed bad. Come on, rebel support. <laughs> Where you think you're going? Where you think you're going? You ain't going nowhere. Even if you don't understand it, I'm still telling you, you ain't going nowhere. Even if you don't feel nothing. <laughs> I don't care if you don't feel nothing. Because you're going to graduate. I am assured, this is what Paul was assured of, the perseverance, starting and finishing. This is what he was persuaded about. This is what he was convinced about, unshakable, immovable, and I feel the same way. I feel the same way about myself, and I feel the same way about you. I don't care what you do, huh? Walk out there with all your behind out, I'm assured. <laughs> Let me go visit the club and see you coming down the pole. I'm assured. You think I'm joking? I said, I'm convinced. Hey, Robin. I'm convinced. He started something. Don't be distracted now. You're grinning and laughing. You ain't flowing with me. Anyway, I'm convinced by myself. I ain't paying you no mind. I'm assured, I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how far gone it is. I don't care how diseased it is. I don't care how rotten it is. I don't care how involved it is. I don't care how complicated it is. I don't care how satisfying it is. I don't care how much enjoyment you get out of it. I'm assured. Now unto him, I'm, 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 I'm turning it over now. You don't look like anything happening. You, you don't look like you're going anywhere. You don't look like you resolved nothing. You don't look like you're in finishing school. You still look like you're doing your own thing. <laughs> you still look like you play play. Huh? And people are talking about you because they say you play plain and you ain't no good and whatever. But you know in your heart he started something. Because after you get through play plain, you hear down in your soul, when peace like a river tended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot you have taught me to say is well <laughs> with my soul. I know I'm messing right now, but something happened to my soul years ago. And nobody can do anything about it. And one day he's going to do something stupendous. The same trifling soul. The same soul that's always running away from him. This soul that's always trying to do his own thing. 
this soul that's always so bright and smart and sarcastic and doing what I want to do and pretending like it's God this same soul going to graduation and this same soul going to be presented now unto him who is able to keep me from falling glory to God he going to present me money and social mass. you don't want to talk to me but he's going to present me you don't think I'm about nothing, but he's going to present me. I'm talking to somebody who has given up on their struggle, who feel like they're not worthy. Uh, the finisher said, I'm going to work this out. One day, one day, when I get through dipping you and pulling you up, when I get through backing you up and pulling you forward, when I get through turning you around, when I get through cutting you off here and backing you up there, when I get through turning everything that you touch upside down, when I get through closing doors and not opening none, hey, 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 somebody help me right here. Hey, buh, buh, buh. hey, hey. What's going on? I'm in finishing school. Come on, help me praise him right now. I'm half baked but I'm going to be full baked after a while. I don't look like anything is happening, but God is going to present me unto him who is able, 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 who is able to deal with this flesh, who is able to break this will, who is able to change this mind, who is able to give me a different appetite, who is able to open up my understanding he's going to present me I'm going to be presentable you all <laughs> tell your neighbor I'm going to be presentable <laughs> hey come on I said I'm going to be with a history of failures I'm going to be presentable with a history of messes I'm going to be presentable with past experiences he's going to hold me up before the host of angels he's going to present me to the throne of God he's going to say look these are my jewels that I'm going to carry to you these are my jewels that I've carried these are my jewels that I've gathered I know they didn't look good but I told you I could change them I know they didn't look good but I told you I could bring them into conformity I know they didn't look good but I told you I could give them a new appetite look at them now they can't help but love me look at them now they can't help but serve me look at them now there's a running in their feet come on Patrice and there's a running in their feet come on Patrice and there's a hastening in their step what kind of God is this come on he's a starter and he's a finisher he's a starter and he's a finisher come on and put your hands together I want you to stand up and praise him shake yourself I said shake yourself you're in it forever shake yourself this is not by accident shake yourself you can't fail not when he's in charge he takes your failures and turns them into success he takes your scandal turn it into a testimony he takes your heartbreak turns it into a song Lord Jesus you better praise him right here he takes your disappointment and turns him into an appointment you better praise this king of kings and thank him for being your professor and one who has brought you into finishing school you didn't pass the exam but you're in there no character no character study he didn't look he looked at your character page and you should have been disqualified and the devil showed up and he showed up and he said look at Israel look at the leader in the filthy garments that represented the whole nation of Israel Satan said they're filthy God said I know I know they're dirty <laughs> Tell your neighbor, 
God knows I'm dirty. I'm dirty. It means I'm dirty. It's, 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 it's. Oh, y'all don't believe you dirty? Look at the dirty thing you said the other day. Huh? Look at the dirty thought that came in your mind last night. You're dirty, you're dirty, you're dirty. Feel, feel, feel. And the, and, and the enemy said, look. And God said, get thee behind me, Satan. I know what to do with dirty people. Put a clean robe on you. It's called the robe of righteousness. Put my son on her. Once I put my son in her and on her, she gonna be all right. Tell somebody I'm in finishing school. With all of my dirtiness, he has not rejected me. I've found a friend who is all to me. His love, his love is ever true. true. I love to tell. I love to tell how he. in the house say or oh, you raise your hand like you're tired you say well tell your neighbor I'm in finishing school not your finishing school but his finishing school and one day he's gonna present me you understand Cecil it's not 
your opinion of yourself is what God says about you, then you're being finished for presentation. You're being finished to be offered up. <laughs> One day he gonna offer up and you won't be ashamed. There will be nothing in you. You'll be thoughtless. You know what it is to be thoughtless? You don't have nothing to hang your head or apologize for. You'll be thoughtless. And you're being offered up to the Father. Do you understand that? Tell your neighbor, I can't wait for that day. I can't. Jeez. All right, I know, I know, I know, I know. Those things excite me. Because when I think about how many times I fail him. But one day I won't fail him anymore. <laughs> one day he ain't going to have no trouble with me. I'll be graduated. Shit in the elbow. Glory to God. He'll be able to pull me up and say, these are my jewels. I'll be fully pleasing him. Amen. 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 Now listen to me. If you don't know Jesus, this is a good time to come. So when you made all that noise, I didn't hear you. Well, I'll, be I'll talk quiet now so you can come. He put it in you. If you feel the pull, if you feel the pull in you, sometimes it's just a pull or your conscience is pricked and you feel like, I feel something pulling me and drawing me to this Jesus. I don't understand everything, but I feel like this is a moment that I should offer up my life to him. If that's what you're feeling, raise your hand. It's not just a feeling, it's a pull, it's a draw. Can't come unless he draws you. If that's what you feel, a drawing, a tugging, come and I'll pray for you. Because that means he started something and he wants to get it going. <laughs> if you strayed away and you want to come back, because he draws you all the time, but you keep trying to dodge the draw, see? Or you shut down, but you realize it's a waste of time. I want to come all the way with him. Just raise your hand. I want, I want to come back. I want to renew my commitment. I want to settle in the class of the finish. Welcome to Beth Rafa. This season is the time when we should become very much aware of the Savior's love and sacrifice towards us. He did not withhold his love and kindness to us who did not deserve it. He has been faithful and mercifully strong. On behalf of our souls and our eternity, cherish the Savior, obey the Savior, love the Savior, and serve the Savior. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough, welcome to Beth Rafa where you can experience healing to heal by loving Christ. With Beth Rafa, one of the biggest things that I love about this church is that the preacher actually encourages you to go back to the Bible and make sure what they're saying or what they're preaching is actually true to the text. This is the first church I've ever been to that's actually done that. I am so fortunate to be at Beth Rafa and to have this as my home church where I have um, so much love poured into me. So Beth Rafa really helped me to stay encouraged um, despite all the obstacles that um, are going on in my life and the issues that I'm dealing with. And um, it's just a, a place where you can be safe and feel secure and know that you have a covering and um, it, you're, you know that you're really growing and your, your love for the Lord is just coming through because it just continues to become more and more magnified and it's just so beautiful to see not only in myself but in others. I'm just really amazed at how far 
Beth Rafa has come, where we have come from, um, especially technology-wise. Um, I remember the days with um, PowerPoints right in the center of the church. Yep, Naj. Um, and uh, just doing the absolute best we can. What has been consistent down through the years, whether we had advanced technology or not, is the spirit of excellence that our bishop has just really instilled in us and in, in ministry. Um, I've had the privilege to be here with her and to travel with her and that constance, regardless of whether she's in Africa or in London or right here, the consistency of uh, doing ministry in excellence. She constantly references um, Daniel had an excellent spirit. And um, so it's just really wonderful to watch Beth Rafa evolve in technology. We thank God for our new cameras um, and now uh, a new app. I was basically born in Beth Rafa and I'm excited to announce the launch of our new app. Beth Rafa has her own app. I am so excited to talk about the new app. You can find uh, a Bible in there to read. You're going to also find a catalog and archives of services. With the new Beth Rafa app, we can stay in touch with push notifications. You can share messages via social media. You get daily encouragement with gems from Gem. You'll also be able to live stream all of our services right from the app. Download it today. It is hot. We have an app for everything. We have an app for Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, and now we got a church app? Come on, y'all. Download this app. Download it, enjoy it, use it, share it with your friends, and uh, it's global. It's not a local app, it's global, so feel free to send it off to uh, your friends here, there, and everywhere. And to God be the glory. God bless you, Beth Rafa. You're doing wonderful. It won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be. Somebody help me right here. He won't leave you. Shepherd. So says yes. I said he gonna leave you. Feel a praise in here now. Why are you gonna leave me? Cause you're in finishing school. <laughs> and he can't take the same class. <laughs> hey! Oh, that means so you might as well get ready to run for Jesus. You might as well put your running shoes on. Cause it's getting ready to be on now. It's on now. Come on, put your hands together and say, it's on. I'm going to finish. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 The boss looking at you. The boss watching you. The boss kind of like you, but the boss likes you for the wrong reason. And they're baiting you, the boss baiting you, and you're a sucker for flattery. But the boss is confused, you see. The boss doesn't know what you know, what you pretend like you don't know. And what you know is you're in finishing school. And the boss can't get nothing started when you're in finishing school because you can't take two courses like that at the same time. <laughs> but something gonna happen to wise up the boss. This thing is untouchable. Like Abraham put Sarah in the wrong position. And the Lord said to the king, if you touch her, I'm gonna kill you. Somebody going out of here. If you come close, I'm gonna kill you. But this is mine. I bought this one. I died for this one. This is not up for grabs. Somebody help me praise him. I said, help me. Your hand not gonna touch this butt. I'm telling you right now. 
I said, your hand not gonna touch this but Somebody help me. You're not gonna touch this but Shop on it is so. Heal my not so. Come on, help me, help me. Shop on it I feel a roaring in my belly. Shop on it is. Come on. Tell your neighbor, I got it, I got it. I'm in finishing school. And some things were getting ready to start, but God intervened. Work with me, Shoshana. Listen to me, baby. We didn't start it in Beth Rapha. It started before you were gone. Ah, uh, this is not no Beth Rapha incident. This is not no Beth Rapha experience. It is God wanting you for himself. Hey, God, help me. I said, is God wanting you for himself forever? <laughs> this ain't no part-time affair. This is permanent. So settle in, girl, settle in, settle in. Even if you don't come here, you're going to be settled in here. He's going to have you for the rest of your life. Not even your mama can touch this. <laughs> Lord, you help me right here. I'm going too far out. Put your hands together. I feel a belly movement. There's a belly movement. Come, baby, come. Somebody pray for her. She wants to get closer to God. Anybody else want to get close? Come on. Move with me now. Come on. Praise him like you never praised him before. Come up, soul. Come up. Come here, Jordan. He say also, shed all suits. Na 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 don't slow it up, don't slow it up. <laughs> hey, come on, Beyonce, Issa. She took all the way, baby, all the way. He's gonna close every door till you say yes. Come outside, hey. No, 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. These are mine, saith the Lord. These are mine, saith. Come, baby. Come, precious. Come, sweetheart. Somebody do this. Somebody do this. Come, sweetheart. That's it. That's it. That's what we're here for, to help you move closer to God, to remind you of your finishing school. Move over here at Hakuse. Follow my finger. Shidia to Kurabasu. Everybody did it in the Asota. Avaso to Kumasa. Somebody take the baby. Move it. Eh. Take the baby. Oh shit, Sus. Come Sante Kanas. Sante the Aso. Come on, shepherd. And the counsel of God stands ashore. And the word of God stands forever. And the spirit of the Lord brings life. Come on, shed sutas. And the hand of God is heavy in the house. Come on, chosen generation. 
royal priesthood elected to show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into this marvelous light can't have the world and Jesus at the same time come on Rebbe come on Melanie help me Melanie come on come on Come on, Ray. Oh, 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 oh. She did it, 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 did it. It's finished, ladies and gentlemen. It's sealed. No more negotiation. I dare you to praise him for the East Kotaba. Shh. Come on up now. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up in your praise. Come on up. Get on up on Sundays. Glory and honor to God. Come here, Renaya. Come, baby. Somebody get this one for me. Come quick, move quickly. Somebody will come, somebody will come. Hey, oh, to Kusiki and the Moses. Uh huh, oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Lord. I'm in finishing school. I don't know how to talk to people, but I'm in finishing school. I have struggles with jealousy, but I'm in finishing school. I don't want to do what God called me to do, but I am in finishing school. And one day I'm going to do just what he tells me to do. Just give me a few more days. <laughs> he going to work it out. So, give me an amaso. Come here, Sharice. Give me an amaso. Give me an amaso. Oh, oh, mama, so, hey, oh, oh, mama, so, hey, 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 oh, 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 Jesus, these are your people, sheep of your pasture, these are your chosen ones, somebody, the answer, they belong in your fold, this part of your flock, this is who you died for. weak and struggling but these are your people I need somebody to help me here this is your church this is your church God you're gonna bring them all the way you're gonna bring them all the way you're gonna bring them all the way God you got your hands on them and you're not gonna let them go they belong to you from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet with all of their errors you still love them with an everlasting love and no matter what they do tonight or tomorrow you are gonna present them one day right now they're the sons of God beloved behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon them that these should be called the sons of God thank you for the Bethrath of people 
Thank you for the souls that you save. Thank you for the ones that you fill with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the ones that you pulled out of sin. Thank you for the struggling ones. Thank you for the straying ones. Thank you for the weak ones. But they're in finishing school. And my soul loves you. And my soul thank you. And my soul praise you. And I'm rejoicing. Because that day is coming. That day is coming. You're keeping them from falling. And you're going to present them faultless. And I need a praise in church right now. Come on, I'm going to sit up on Come on, come on. One more, come on. Come on, Rebe Sus. And we love the Lord. And we love the Lord. Every backsliding saint, every strange saint, they're coming on in. The ones that left, coming on back. The ones that gave up, getting ready to say yes. The ones that don't want you, get ready to love you. The ones that are running from you, get ready to run to you. I see them coming. I open the doors of the church. I open the doors of the church. I'm interceding. Ah, oh, God, put a hastening in their step. Take the taste out of their mouth. Quiet the lust. Quiet the lust. Replace it with your word. I thank you, God, that you gave them a taste for the word. And they want the word back. They want the word back. They want the word back. Somebody help me here. They want the word back. There's a travailing in here. Somebody help me travail. Come on, Suta. Come on, out of your belly. The atheist, the agnostic, the Hindu, the Buddhist. Ah, the nun, the ones who don't know. Ah, bring him on back. Grew up in the church, left the church. Sang in the choir, left the choir. On the prayer band, left the prayer band. Used to say Jesus, now say the universe. Come on back now, shitty koto. I call you. I call you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Because he started and he gonna finish. Church, help me shout hallelujah. Let me shout hallelujah. Let me shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Mother, your soul. I'm finished, God. But remember, Mother Gersey. Don't let her leave here without you. Turn on the light now. Turn on the light. Somebody help me praise him. Come on, come on, God. That's your child. That's your daughter. Turn on the light. Turn it on. Turn on the light. <laughs> hey God, help me out of my soul. Come over the under your suitor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we thank you for it. Lady Kusa. Maybe I know those some of us so to do so to do to be a city and let him also. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to start communion. But I just need a praise out of your belly. Jesus. I just need a praise out of your belly. I don't have no doubt. Tell your neighbor, I don't have no doubt. I don't have no doubt that whatever he started, I don't have any doubt that he's gonna finish. Amen. We're getting ready to have communion.
I don't Welcome to Beth Rafa. This season is the time when we should become very much aware of the Savior's love and sacrifice towards us. He did not withhold his love and kindness to us who did not deserve it. He has been faithful and mercifully strong. On behalf of our souls and our eternity, cherish the Savior, obey the Savior, love the Savior, and serve the Savior. On behalf of our pastor, Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough, welcome to Beth Rafa where you can experience healing to heal by loving Christ.